In this video, let us learn why we need to check for eye position and movements every time we perform the modified rapid cardiopulmonary cerebral assessment. In alert children, the normal position of eyes is described as mid position and the voluntary side to side movements of the eyes are described as normal extraocular movements. In the child who is unresponsive with an unstable airway, respiratory compromise, shock with cardiovascular dysfunction, eye signs of conjugate deviation, nystagmus, with or without eyelid twitch. are suggestive of ongoing seizure activity. The eye movements that is conjugate deviation, nystagmus, with or without eyelid twitch, have been noted in two different conditions in seriously ill children. Number one, it is triggered by electrical activity in the brain, that is seizure activity. Number two, it has been noted in children presenting in pre-terminal cardiorespiratory failure, that is a significant oxygen deficit can also trigger these seizure-like movements in the eyes. It is important that first we recognize that every unresponsive child and look for eye signs. Look for eye position and movements and monitor them throughout resuscitation. The position and movement of eyes are controlled by voluntary or skeletal muscles. Abnormal electrical activity in the brain can cause seizures resulting in tonic-clonic movements of the limbs. Concurrently, the skeletal muscles responsible for eye movements can also convulse, resulting in conjugate deviation or nystagmus with or without eyelid twitch. During prolonged seizure activity, obvious tonic-clonic movement stops while the extraocular movements muscles continue to convulse. This condition can be recognized if conjugate deviation, lid twitch and nystagmus is noted in the unresponsive child. Misdiagnosed as postictal or sleeping, NCSC or subtle status can often be easily missed. Neurologists describe this as subtle status epilepticus. In such situations, we need to continue to clear and keep the airway open, continue to provide oxygen via the back valve mask or Jackson circuit, continue to fluid resuscitate, initiate ionotrope for shock with cardiovascular dysfunction, Laura, Laura, second dose at 1.53 p.m. Continue to administer anti medications as per the status epilepticus protocol until the physiological status resolves fully. Abnormal position of eyes and movements have also been noted in children presenting with cardiorespiratory failure. Severe cerebral hypoxia or cerebral hyperperfusion can also cause these movements that is conjugate deviation, nystagmus or eyelid twitch. Diarrheal dehydration with hypovolemic hypotensive shock, severe dengue shock, hypotensive septic shock, near fatal attack of asthma, etc. In these conditions, conjugate deviation, nystagmus, or eyelid twitch develop in pre terminal cardiorespiratory failure irrespective of etiologies. This healthy infant has presented with complaints of cough, fever, and acute onset of first episode of breathlessness. Probable etiology is pneumonia or bronchiolitis. The physiological status, airway is unstable, breathing, impending respiratory failure, circulation shock, disability, altered level of consciousness. Check for eye position and movements. This infant shows signs of nystagmus. Hypoxic non-convulsive status epilepticus is suggestive of very severe cerebral hypoxia and imminent cardiorespiratory failure. The plan of action includes provision of high flow oxygen with CPAP followed by early intubation, administration of fluid bolus therapy and inotrope infusion to correct cardiovascular dysfunction and shock. This two-year-old boy presented 
with acute onset of cough cold fever breathlessness for 5 days the etiology pneumonia with right sided pyopneumothorax his frame triangle showed an airway stable impending respiratory failure tachycardia vasodilatory cardiogenic shock with low map an altered level of consciousness with eye signs of hypoxic non convulsive stenosis epilepticus note the grunt and persistent conjugate deviation after provision of oxygen via the jackson re circuit fluid boluses dopamine noradrenaline correction of metabolic derangements anthrocostomy this child has become playful with normal tone and posture and eye movements in the emergency department this can impact treatment in the first administration of anti convulsants is life saving in the second the anti convulsants can trigger cardiac arrest <laughs>